Resuming debate, reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for Durham. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I appreciate the opportunity to rise uh, in debate on the Opposition Day motion brought forward by the NDP. And in many ways, having listened to uh, speakers from the government side, particularly the member from Scarborough Southwest, it has me thinking it's Wednesday on the Hill, Madam Speaker, and not, not Monday. Wednesday because his speech seemed more like yoga on the Hill, where he twisted and contorted himself into different positions, trying to claim that the Liberal track record is on the side of evidence, yet um, not getting there, Madam Speaker. So it, it, it was an interesting speech, and I'm going to address what uh, that, that honourable member said. I, I will say the one thing that my friend from Victoria and the NDP bring forward that makes sense with this motion is the contradiction facing the government. And, and the motion begins with trying to recognize the contradiction. But it's my position, and I think my colleagues in the Conservative Caucus, Madam Speaker, that you don't fill a bad policy vacuum with more bad policy. So their, the end state of their Opposition Day motion is to immediately de decriminalize marijuana. And I don't think any responsible advocate would say that, was, that would be the approach that we leave here today to a Wild West situation. But I understand their frustration, Madam Speaker, because there is a degree of Wild West out there right now. My friend from Oshawa talked about the new dispensary opened in his community. We've seen this in Vancouver and Toronto and a lot of parts of the country because of the vacuum created by an irresponsible, ill-thought-out promise by the Prime Minister when he was third-party leader. There were a number of reasons for his bold policy statement, but one of them was to, to cover up his own uh, use of marijuana while he was a member of Parliament, Madam Speaker. But, but you don't create public policy based on your own situation or in response to what you feel is going to be the political debate. You actually do consult the evidence, the experts. You listen, which my friend from Winnipeg speaks more in this House than anyone, but seems to listen very little, Madam Speaker, and I hope he would change that too. Like that. They talk about evidence and science. The evidence is before us on the scientific front. Significant harm to the developing brain by marijuana. So the motion today that would quickly decriminalize a drug is irresponsible. But so is the approach of the vacuum created by this government as they lumber towards fully legalizing and in some ways legitimizing marijuana, Madam Speaker. So the evidence is crystal clear. And I didn't hear the member from Scarborough Southwest talk much about that when he talked about evidence. I did hear that member, the former chief of police from Toronto, quote at length the member of parliament from Outremont. He seemed to revel in that quote. So I'll quote the member from Scarborough Southwest. When years ago in the Scarborough Mirror, a paper that serves the riding he represents, he said while Chief of Police, we do not support the decriminalization of small amounts of marijuana. He goes on to say that sends an appalling and inappropriate message and is not going to do anything to reduce the harm in our communities. That's an interesting quote, Madam Speaker. You didn't hear those words from him here today now as a politician. He is the one charged with filling this vacuum Madam Speaker, that all communities are concerned about. He seems to have changed his position and given no reason for it. He did refer to evidence of scientists and law enforcement. Let's look at the evidence from law enforcement. The Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, which that member used to belong to, have looked at the public policy ramif ramification of legalization decriminalization, and they came up with a policy that most recently the Conservative Convention in Vancouver endorsed. In fact, my, my friend from Beaches East York should do a little more research. It's not decriminalization, Madam Speaker, but it's making sure that there is not a direct route for small amounts straight to the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the criminal route. It's called discretion for law enforcement and ticketing, Madam Speaker. The Canadian Associations of Chiefs of Police, which the member from Scarborough Southwest, the now Parliamentary Secretary, charged with, with leading this vacuum uh, that exists on marijuana, um, they passed Resolution 3 in Winnipeg in 2013. That member was part 
of that conference, Madam Speaker, where they said, with respect to marijuana, quote, the negative impact on public safety, the health of young people, and because of it impairs cognitive function, needed to have a hybrid solution that allowed law enforcement and law allowed society to keep control through, the, through criminalization of this drug, but to give discretion to law enforcement. Because I think, Madam Speaker, none of us want to see the scenario of a young person whose career opportunities or travel opportunities are cut short by personal use. I think we've evolved as a society, in fact, since 2013, when that member was, was member of the Chiefs of Police Association, uh, I, as a member of Parliament, was taking that position, which at the time was contrary to my own party's position, Madam Speaker. Why? Because my old colleague and our friend David Wilkes, a lifelong RCMP officer, brought forward this proposal in conjunction with the Chiefs of Police and made a public par policy rationale and argument for it, Madam Speaker. He worked diligently, and I salute David, uh, who lost in the last election, and that's too bad, because his policy work as an independent MP has been more profound and more substantive than this entire government, Madam Speaker. And the yoga that member from Scarborough Southwest played, saying they're, they're doing an evidence-based approach, but then disregarding the evidence from the group he belonged to, Chiefs of Police, disregarding evidence from the medical profession, Madam Speaker, and allowing this lawlessness to exist. So that is where I agree with my friends in the NDP, recognizing the contradiction in terms when the Prime Minister said, this product will be legal if you vote for me, and now we're waiting, and there's indecision, and there's mental and physical yoga trying to justify their delays in position. They knew when they made that promise, Madam Speaker, that Canada would be in violation of international treaties. They knew the science supported the fact that the developing brain and chronic use of marijuana can lead to cognitive impairment. They knew the risks to public safety, Madam Speaker. They knew there would be a Wild West approach to these street front retail locations who hoped to be the stores when the member from Scarborough Southwest finally unveils his plan. This is like the gold rush, Madam Speaker. They're all staking their claim. I've also saw when I was Veterans Affairs Minister, groups suggesting to veterans that medical marijuana would cure their PTSD. That bothered me to no end because the science doesn't support that. In fact, the Public Safety Committee and the Parliamentary Secretary is here. The first witness, the Chair of Research for the Canadian Psychiatric Association said there is no clinical support for PTSD assistance through medical marijuana. In fact, reports suggest the contrary, Madam Speaker. But groups who are also trying to get storefronts in some cases are, are trying to sign up more and more people, not always concerned on whether that's the right treatment option for them. So what I'd like to see out of this government, Madam Speaker, and particularly out of that member, is a more succinct discussion of the harms of this substance. I, I took the position, contrary to actually my party, Madam Speaker, to say we can't have the criminal ramifications for young people for, for personal use that is not causing any harm. But no man is an island, is the old expression, Madam Speaker. We can't just permit a drug to be decriminalized with one vote in this House and no approach to making sure that there's control and criminal sanction when warranted, Madam Speaker. So I think what I like about the NDP's opposition motion is it's at least bringing this issue up. The Liberals ran very hard on it, Madam Speaker. We all remember and we remember the, the drives they did on university and college campuses. And now we have this indecision that's being filled by operators. Um, and, and there is no suggestion the federal government is going to take a leadership role to stop that. We've seen Mary, Mayor Tory in Toronto crack down, and I applaud him for that. But we see this government who ran on it, avoiding responsibility to have a serious discussion on this, much like the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police did in 2013, to talk about the harms, but how we can reduce the criminal sanction and, and the impact for someone that is not causing harm to others, Madam Speaker. So I hope this debate today starts off a process of this government becoming responsible for the vacuum they've created 
and the uncertainty and the criminal activity that surrounds it and come up with a solution before the House rises. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Oh, sorry. Uh, Nanaimo Lady Smith, I'm sorry. Wonder what. Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you to the Conservative member for his speech. Uh, we're certainly intrigued that just a few weeks ago at the Conservative Convention there was a resolution passed to uh, allow for ticketing for those possessed with small personal amounts of marijuana. Um, so there's movement happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, in that light, I'm interested in the member's comments about uh, my hope, the New Democrats' hope that um, freeing up the financial resources, which right now are consumed with ticketing individuals, uh, young adults in particular, for personal possession of marijuana, what, what might be the benefits of freeing up those uh, police and uh, uh, taxpayer resources to be able to focus on the true aspects of drug crime? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Member for Durham. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank the member from Nanaimo, Lady Smith, for her question and for delving in to what I talked about. I, I appreciate the fact that she was listening intently. My rhetorical passion got the better of me. I didn't get into the full detail of what the chiefs of police said and the position I support, which is the, the amounts of 30 grams of simple possession or one gram of, of cannabis resin, Madam Speaker, would be exempted from the criminalized route at the discretion of the law enforcement official. They are the experts that we should be listening to on the public safety ramifications. So that officer, he or she could see a situation and issue a ticket. If there was someone repeated or near a school or with other factors combining it, combining with possible other illegal activity, which is often the case, they would have the discretion to lay the charge and keep that criminal sanction intact. It's a responsible approach, Madam Speaker, that was advanced for many years by our colleague David Wilkes and is supported by the Chiefs of Police and by many Canadians. I actually would suggest to the Honourable Member from Scarborough Southwest, who I respect a great deal, to push this solution on the Prime Minister rather than his radical, not well thought out legalization plan. Questions and comments? Uh, questions et commentaires? The Honourable Member for Anglican Lawrence. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my uh, honourable uh, colleague this morning for his impassioned speech. I actually think that there is some common ground in his remarks this morning. We, we do agree, I think, on both sides of the aisle um, that there are some harms that are associated with marijuana that we need to protect against. I think we would also agree, Madam Speaker, that the status quo was not working. And as the Honourable Minister of Health said recently before the United Nations, that we can't arrest ourselves out of this situation. Um, and as somebody who's worked in law enforcement, I think that she speaks with great credibility when she makes that statement. Um, he says as well that he doesn't believe that there should be criminal sanctions on a go-forward basis. But when one listens very closely to his remarks this morning, um, one has trouble finding how there is any clarity in the way of a solution which will ensure that youth will not continue to be charged, that we will not reduce the harm principle, uh, because there's nothing in his remarks that I heard this morning that addresses the supply side of the issue, and most importantly, nothing in his remarks that actually provides a clear solution when it comes to choking off the resources and the proceeds of crime, which will continue to be fed to organized crime. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Durham. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. My friend from Michael Lawrence, um, didn't quite hear my speech because I did ta talk about harm reduction. I actually used a quote from his colleague, the member from Scarborough Southwest, who said decriminalize decriminalizing uh, small amounts writ large would not be a way to reduce harm in the community. In fact, that, that was, and he's now charged with coming up with a solution. So I did mention, Madam Speaker, this, since 2013, I've been advocating for a change in the status quo and I've been quite clear here, not to suggest legalizing and opening up and that there's no harm to this product, which, which the legalization vacuum created by the Prime Minister has created that impression and the lawlessness on the street fronts and the shops. What we should have is a, is a sound policy discussion working with the Chiefs of Police on an approach that gives them the tools they need to sanction criminal behavior. But as I said, no one wants to see a young person or a professional or or a Liberal MP <laughs> criminalized for simple possession, Madam Speaker. I've been saying that even when I was at odds with some of the folks in my own party. 
but I was doing so alongside people like David Wilkes and others by talking about this in a balanced way, how we can reduce criminal sanction where it's not needed, control and provide that criminal sanction where it is, talk about the risks to health, talk about the risks to public safety. We've heard none of that in a responsible way from the government. Resuming 